Hey, you guys, welcome to this episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. And today I'm gonna to talk about the six-figure salary. And is it enough? Is it not enough? So a recent study found that fewer than one in three people said that they were completely financially secure. Now, feeling financially secure and being financially secure are two different things. And with comparison culture these days, I'm wondering if they're better off than they actually think they are. Ultimately, I want you to feel empowered to take control of your money, no matter what salary you're bringing in. And as far as inflation and wages go, we might actually be better off than you think. So let's take a closer look at this. Like I mentioned, less than one in three Americans said that they feel financially secure. And they also said that earning a salary of $233,000 is what they would need in order to really get a sense of security. Now, that's a lot of money. And I do understand too, at one point, that our dollar is not going as far as it used to, absolutely. But that's a lot of money, you guys, to feel financially secure. And I've just been doing this job a really long time, and I know people that make way less than that, but they've gotten themselves in a position financially where they feel secure without that high of an income, okay? So I wanna just debunk that right now, that it is possible to feel financially secure and not have to make that. now. Do we all want more income? Sure, absolutely. But if we don't know how to handle it, then it's gonna screw us up anyways, right? Now, when I saw that number, my mind went immediately to the comparison culture. And it might sound really simple, but comparison is such a powerful force. And it can completely throw you off track when you're trying to handle your money wisely and practice gratitude and all of it. Because just think about it. I mean, your ability to see outrageous lifestyles all over the world just from scrolling on your phone. And maybe not even outrageous, but just the average mom out there and what she's doing and what her kitchen looks like or what what car they're driving. I mean, it's just insane that we have the ability to see anyone at any time doing anything. I mean, for most of history, this has never been a thing. And this is probably why consumer debt has just reached a trillion dollars in the US, you guys. This is a big problem. So again, you can open up Instagram and you're looking at your aunt in Kentucky and what she's doing. And before long, you're looking at an influencer who lives in LA whose clothes and shoes you would never need in your real life. Let's be honest, that's how I feel sometimes. So what's the first takeaway that I want you to keep in mind is that comparison culture is real and it's something that we have to actively fight against if we wanna have a realistic view of feeling financially secure. So no matter where you are in your financial journey, I promise you it's not as bad as you think it is or as bad as social media may make you think that it is. All right, before I talk about other solutions and causes to this problem, I wanna tell you about Telestrations. You guys, this is one of my favorite games right now. I have played it with my team here at work. I've played it with my friends and my family. And this is such a fun game. It always makes me laugh. It always gets like a reaction from everyone playing. I mean, it is a game that can bring a group together and have a lot of fun. And if you're getting out of debt or saving up for an emergency fund and you don't have a ton of money just to go and spend out on the town, Playing games with your friends and family at home is such a great way to not only create memories, but have a lot of fun. So you can buy Telestrations at Walmart or wherever you buy board games. All right, the second thing I wanna point out that is similar to comparison culture, but a little different, and that is lifestyle creep. So let's say that you've never been really intentional with your money because you never felt like you had to be. Now this could be because you've always just made wise choices or always had what you needed, or it could be because you've never fully understood the consequences of things like credit card debt and car payments. If you've always been able to keep yourself afloat, but you also never felt like you had true freedom in your spending, you might be a victim of lifestyle creep. And maybe over time, as you advanced in your career, gradually made a little bit more money, when you did that, maybe you also were like, okay, you know, I'm in different stages of life. Maybe you're getting married, you have kids, you're buying a house. All of these things that you feel like you need to do with your money just start to absolutely creep in. And then you may look back at your first job and think, oh my gosh, what? Wait, all I made was $35,000 a year? How, did, how do I still feel like today I'm living paycheck to paycheck? So if that sounds like you, it might be time for a little bit of tough love. And I'm gonna tell you that you're gonna need a budget. 
Yep. You need a plan to live on less than you make because if you keep making more money as you advance in your job, but you keep spending at that same rate, it's constantly gonna feel like you're living paycheck to paycheck. And if money still feels tight after all these years, then it's a habit problem, it's not a money problem. And building wealth really is more about shifting your mindset than it is about math. And if you never adjust your behavior, you're not attacking the root issue. So I'm not oversimplifying anything here. It's just the truth and it's been proven over and over again. There's a simple solution to this collective pain point, but before we talk about that, I wanna talk about our sponsor, Christian Healthcare Ministries. Guys, I know we're all looking for ways to save, especially on healthcare costs. So do yourself a favor and check out Christian Healthcare Ministries. It's biblically based health cost sharing that can keep your budget under control. So learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. So here's what you can do to finally have a breakthrough and fix the vicious cycle, and that is start a spending detox. Okay, this isn't gonna be forever, but I would challenge you to do this for a month. So take a look at your spending last month and make a list of all your non-negotiable needs. So you wanna start with what I call your four walls, which is food, shelter, transportation, and utilities. And this may mean cutting out all the wants that you have. That could be five streaming services. Maybe it's skipping your facial appointments or pressing pause on your gym membership. So one way to instantly find margin in your budget is to cut takeout, cut out restaurants, and eat at home for a month. You would be shocked the hundreds of dollars that you will save if you just cook at home. So whatever it looks like for you, again, it can be a challenge to yourself, but you need to understand that you can survive with half the stuff that you're used to buying. Then at the end of the month, you could look up and be like, oh wow, okay, I really thought I needed those things, but some of that stuff I don't even miss. And then from there, you can slowly start introducing back in some spending, but you're doing it on a budget and a plan. So this is gonna help you start fresh, adjust some old habits and getting rid of some of those random expenses that you don't need that is stealing your margin. And promise all of this will add up. Now, if you're interested in the big picture update on our state of money in our world, I have some good news for you. Inflation is down 3%. And in April, the average hourly wages were up 4.4% from 2022. So there's some progress happening. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that the economy definitely affects our money. Inflation, debt, unemployment, wages, all of that. They're very real. But you have to realize that none of those things have the power over your money like you do. No government or president is gonna bail you out of your financial struggles. So you have to start making a choice. And listen, I see average people every single day who are taking control of their money and they are building real wealth with a third of that $233,000 dream salary, okay? These are people, everyday people, that are like, you know what? I get to change my discipline, I get to change my habits, and they do it, you guys, and they see the progress. So listen, if you need a place to start, I recommend downloading Every Dollar, our budgeting app. Every Dollar Premium is incredible because what it does is it helps you with your spending, tracking your spending and knowing where your income's going and actually having a plan for your money. And also check out our baby steps. The seven baby steps is our proven plan to help you get control of your money out of debt with an emergency fund, investing for retirement, everything that you need to build wealth. And listen, you guys, you can do this. So even if you're bringing in a million dollars a year, but you never address the core issues, your bad habits are going to carry over into that world. So make sure that you understand that your habits are a really big deal. So send this video to a friend who may relate to maybe the comparison culture or the lifestyle creep or feeling like, man, they just need that jump start in knowing that they can take control of their money. Because if you've been watching or listening for any amount of time, you know I so believe that you can take control of your money and create a life you love. 